Aloha and welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. Here at the show, our mission is to dig deep to find out how cybersecurity touches all of us in our everyday lives. Today, once again, we have an exceptional co-host, Mr. Andrew Lanning. Andrew, the security guy. Aloha, dude. What's up, brother? Welcome back. Hey, man. Mike. Glad to be here. All right, Thanks, and Dave. we also have a great guest today. Again, joining us, the president of the ISC2 chapter in Hawaii of... Uh, of the ISC2. What is the ISC2? Tell us again, ISC2. The International Information Systems <laughs> Security <laughs> Certification Consortium. Thanks for saying that for me. Is that why they have the two on there? Because yeah. the SSs and the CCs. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. And yes. I actually got, they got, they got all those words out right. They got more so it's the, Jeff um, Milford, yeah. The preeminent organization worldwide for certifications. They also have a foundation that does educational outreach to make everybody safer on the internet. Yes, very good stuff. Just Check on the out. internet. Now, I thought you had CSSPs have eight domains. You even got physical security. Oh, like we, well, they, they share information publicly on the internet that you right. can go avail yourself of. I think. The, yeah, right. the foundation is is more focused on um, home users, the people out there, kids, adults, seniors, what they can do to keep mm -hmm. themselves safe. Now you have a whole new kids project going on. Yeah, you guys like safe and secure Garfield, online, right? Yep. Yeah, tell us license. a little bit about the safe and secure online. What do we know now? Um, it's a new program. Yeah. Only it's a new program. Uh, Garfield is the spokesman. The, he, um, Andrew Davis created a couple of new characters um, because some of the other Garfield characters obviously don't know much about security. They don't have any keyboards. <laughs> yeah, you know. I don't think Odie could do much. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but the, the kids one is focused on cyberbullying, um, why you shouldn't share your passwords among your friends. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff that security professionals take for granted, but a lot of people just don't don't think about naturally. Yeah. So uh, the ISC has a URL. It's safeandsecureonline.org, and there's a section for kids, as I mentioned, a section for adults, and a section for seniors. Seniors, for example, has uh, how to avoid banking scams, um, how to set your computer up to be more secure, things like that. So it's really focused towards the target groups. And we as a chapter are building our safe and secure online program so that we can go out into the community and basically spread the word. This is what you can do to help yourself. You want to provide some of that training. Oh, exactly. we can take the camera out. We have the, the mobile camera. We could go out and talk to people like when we see them doing stuff. Oh, wouldn't that be great? On the street, be fun, asking yeah. some just questions on the street. Them. We'll yeah. just expose yeah. how bad How many passwords is? do you have? Yeah. One. One. Really? really? <laughs> For everything. <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. That's the worst thing possible, right? What's, what's so bad about having one password, easy to remember, across all my websites? It's going to get out there in the in the criminal world. I, I mean, look what happened to Yahoo. What was that? Billions of uh, of accounts got got or got breached. So people's Yahoo password and their account is sold on the dark web. And if you're using that for your banking account, then the guys can get into your bank, steal your money. Yeah. Um, they can impersonate you. You know, maybe not as much as a financial risk, but damage your reputation, log Buy into your Facebook your name. account, <laughs> all, yeah. Those, yeah. all those yeah. things. Yeah, there was, a, there was a hack a couple of years ago, someone got into the Apple version of this, mm -hmm. and of course Apple has the ability to not only find your Mac online, or find your iPhone, right. but also to wipe it remotely. Mm -hmm. So people were having their Macs wiped <laughs> remotely by the hacker. Yeah. And that was a big problem. It corrupted yeah. their yeah. credentials. Sure. Imagine losing all that data all of a sudden. Oh, uh, and if you don't have backups, Too bad. lesson learned, everybody, backups, backups, backups. Those are some of the things we'll be talking about today, what okay. you can do to protect yourself, backups, um, the ransomware mm -hmm. that's out there right now is just crazy. Um, make sure you take your backups and disconnect that external drive when you're finished. Because if you leave it connected, it's going to get Encrypted because by that the is a physically mapped network drive. Exactly. As long as it's connected physically to yep. your computer, so the worms that go out there and fish for other computers on your network will recognize that we'll see as that. a device it wants to get. So WannaCry, who encrypted your 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 data on your computer, would see that remote as another computer. The tr so the, even the backup is even the backup. To, it's right. that server messaging block we talked about. How it trans mm -hmm. across yeah, right. there. Right. Yeah, right. So, so you've got that's an open door to that service. Right. Right. So, yeah, um, or, or use a cloud backup. Yeah. But backup something. Backup, somewhere backup, backup. And make sure it's disconnected from your and, and more than one location. 
That, that's what's great about back, uh, cloud backups, right? Mm -hmm. So you're you're getting your cloud certification now. Yeah. And uh, so backup locations, if you're in, say, Amazon Web Services, they have multiple regions, mm -hmm. multiple zones, and your backups are in actually two or more of them. Right. And you can pick the zones you want, and you don't have to have two in um, Northeastern uh, sure. California. You could have Virginia. You could have Oregon. Mm -hmm. And so if one goes down, you still got the other one there sure. available, right? Yeah. So t you're going to get this cloud certification here. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of security, and we're talking about online stuff. So right. what is the cloud certification from the ISC2? It's somewhat similar to the CISSP in that security is security. So the, Physical the security, CISSP network security. is a certified information system security professional. Professional. So that's the and that's, gold that's standard the premium, overall, right? right? So this one, the CCSP, mm -hmm. is geared towards cloud. Cloud specific. Cloud specific right. stuff. And right. break this down, does it have the same security <coughs> domains? Or? It has similar domains. Um, what I found studying was maybe 40% of it was review from the CISSP side of things. But of course, there's a lot of new stuff being in the cloud. You have um, jurisdictional differences. Um, a lot of countries have different laws, different regulations that you have to consider. Um, encryption is critical. Um, you need to do due diligence with your vendors. You need to make sure the guy's not going to go out of business. If you're storing your data in a cloud uh, with a provider, how portable is it? What happens if you want to move to another per, another mm -hmm. provider? Can you do that, or are they using a proprietary format of your data? How quickly can you get to it? If there's uh, e-discovery action against you and your data, is it in your SLA that you're going to be notified by the provider? Okay, let's discuss. E-discovery is, it going to come e as a is what? E-discovery is when uh, law enforcement wants to come look at your data for some reason. They think that maybe you've done something wrong. There's there's something there that they need, that, that they've obtained a warrant to basically look at. You could be the piece of a puzzle on another case. And exactly. You're lucky if yeah. it's law enforcement that wants to look and yeah. not someone else's lawyer with a claim against right. you because then right. you might be paying for all that forensic discovery. Right. Right. And since so much of the cloud is multi-tenant, your data could actually be scooped up with Somebody another company's yes, yeah, right. data, and now you have no control. Your data is, is out there, your intellectual property, your confidential financial data, all of that. And these are all the concerns that the CCSP talks about that you really need to know before you get into these things. Now, it sounds a lot like the cloud for businesses mm -hmm. is exceptionally similar to just Raider social media accounts. Because we're, we're mm -hmm. doing the same thing. We're putting our data, we're putting our pictures in Pinterest. Mm -hmm. We're, we're mm -hmm. posting our opinions on Twitter. Mm -hmm. We're putting our personal data in Facebook. Right. We're, we're doing all those things. Mm -hmm. What's the first step? What's the, okay, so I, I, I raised four daughters. Now, this stuff is just now becoming prevalent. Now, they're all grown up in their 20s, they're mm -hmm. in college. What do I tell my daughters? You have to think twice before you put anything up there. Uh, I was talking to my nephew last week, and he was telling me about this friend of his who's, who was saying, I don't care what I put up there. It's never going to come back and haunt me. <laughs> and <laughs> of course, you know, we, we can laugh being security people. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is that most people can't imagine what goes through the hackers' minds. They are so creative in the way they can use that data to get you which you think is, a, is an innocent thing. I was, I was reading about a woman, um, she had posted pictures of herself in her kitchen. So somebody could look at that picture and say, oh, you have a, uh, a Cuisinart product. I'm gonna craft a, a phishing email, a spear phishing email to get you to click on a link. I'm gonna tell you that your, your device has a defect. We need you to click here to register it. And boom, now we've dropped Update malware. Update your warranty. Right. Yep, right. We'll send um, you a new one. Yeah. The, the other example I mentioned before was um, you go into LinkedIn, you see this, this CEO who does a lot of, of uh, charity work. Mm -hmm. So you send him an email and say, hey, we're having a charity golf golf meet, golf tournament. Oh. Um, because of your work in these other charities, we want to give you a VIP package. Click here to register. Mm -hmm. And it's... <laughs> and maybe, just maybe, that's and, right. and he's not trained. And boom. it's golf, and it's free. Right. <laughs> I mean, if you're a golf nut, and it's free. And, and I've seen some amazingly crafted spear phishing attempts. So let's, I mean, let's review that. that. I mean, just Bill like fishing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, <laughs> phishing, phishing is when you send an email to somebody to get them to click on a malicious link or mm -hmm. go to a site and enter personal data of some yeah. kind. So right. you can 
hack them somehow. Yep. Spear phishing is a targeted right. email to just that individual or small group of individuals. Mm -hmm. And we want to go for the whale, quote unquote, yep. and, and like the CEO, CIO, sure. the financial controller, mm -hmm. and we want them to do something for us, or right. we want the owner of a company to do something mm -hmm. for us. But it could be somebody minor in the organization or not even in the organization. So sure. like you said, vetting vendors. Mm -hmm. the, the easiest way into someplace big like the DOD, you get into a vendor first. Mm -hmm. And that small company is your pathway in. Look what happened to Target. Yeah. They used the HVAC contractor. And the networks weren't segmented, meaning the customer data was on the same network that the traffic for the HVAC was for. So and you the, get and them the POS. <laughs> and the and POS, the POS. Which is what they all right. yeah. That cracked me up. They put the POS on the same network. Yeah. yeah. Now, POS, point of sale system, very point of sale, bad, very, very bad, bad thing to do. Right? So yeah, it, should, it should all fall. be separated so that HVHC travels over its own little network. That's all it ever touches. Yeah. Now this but, is one of the reasons we have to keep, as t technology professionals, we have to keep going back and get more, more training, mm -hmm. got to keep reading, to yep. keep it's constant. It's constant because when you first set up a network, you know, 15 years ago, I might have done the same thing. Oh, mm -hmm. my network works great. Now everything communicates, everything mm -hmm. functions, it's perfect. It's just the way I want it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think to segment all these networks. Right? That, that's an afterthought. Right. But if you'd kept up with your education, taken a cyber course, read a couple of really bad articles about stuff like this, mm -hmm. you're starting to block off different pieces of your data that you don't want right. other people to touch. Here's, here's yeah. one I just read about in the New York Times. When you have your home wireless network, uh, a lot of people now have smart homes. Oh. That <laughs> traffic needs to be on its own network. That's right. Uh, don't separated. hook that up to your PC. <laughs> exactly, separated from, from that. And, you know, a lot of what we're talking about is very sophisticated for the average home user, but it's possible to do. There's plenty of stuff out there. Um, you've got the vendor documentation. You've got YouTube videos, all this kind of thing. But you, you don't have to live a paranoid life, but you have to do more than use your best judgment. Mm. You have to be able to step back and say, is there any vulnerability by me doing this? You're putting all your eggs in one basket. And it's it's like the company that just got hacked recently. Uh, a lot of the Fortune 500 companies were using it, where they stored people's passwords for different systems. Oh yeah, we won't mention the vendor. No, no we know need. What we're talking about yeah. But all those credentials got stolen. All the people had to change their passwords, which was a big hit to productivity. And the companies, the Fortune 500 companies using it, had to recreate the secure connections to that company and jump through all kinds of hoops That'll work. and yeah you install a new fridge in your home you want to you brag about it hey look at my new smart fridge and you take a picture of it now everybody on they can get onto Facebook and see that picture knows, yep. oh you've got that brand of smart fridge Cool. What's, IoT what's security. the default password? What's the default password? Showdan.com. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, I think the consumers, the problem with them is they really don't understand, as you mentioned, you know, when you, when you can get an image of them or you know something that they have, mm -hmm. they are a target perhaps for their work and they just don't think about how a hacker is going to cross. How easy. You know, if I can't get to you at your business and I need you, I will follow you home. I will mm -hmm. see if your wireless is locked down. You know, this is what they're going to yeah. do. And the, there's people that will pay you enough to get the information that you're seeking. Right? Exactly. So. And when it comes to social media, it's 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 not just a matter of protecting yourself, but also your family. Mm -hmm. and, sure. Uh, look at, <laughs> I, I, I hate this. Thank God I did not fall victim to this because I don't do that. But Ashley Madison. Oh yeah. Ashley, the you know, if you want to have it affair, you go secretly on this website, sign right. up, and you you get a partner. And they got hacked. So these lists of people that were signed up for Ashley Madison, that's telling everybody, hey, I wanted to have an affair on my partner. How many marriages were ruined yeah. because these lists went yeah. public? And careers. And careers. I mean, and you're, you're <laughs> that's a bad thing. I mean, especially if you have a secure job somewhere, DOD, yeah. NSA, FBI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want that kind of stuff public. Yeah, you, if you have one of those jobs, you shouldn't be doing that stuff anyway. You really Obviously, shouldn't because be. Because you're, yeah. you're probably going to get caught otherwise. <laughs> you're gonna get, that, that's a good point. Uh, no matter what you do, if it's a crime in the Internet technology world mm -hmm. today, there is evidence of you, no matter what you do yeah. to back out of that, <clears throat> no matter what you do to erase your tracks, there's digital footprints sure. everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how they have such trouble with attribution a lot of times, and, and I don't know if they're really keeping that from us, but we know that there's tracks. Mm -hmm. and, sure. and I often wonder why we, they struggle with attribution, because you know, maybe they're, they're saving some of those final steps so they don't want to give to the bad guys where they're 
catching them, what path way they're coming across. But yeah. it's interesting how we you get in from the media and from new, you know reliable sources. We find that uh, we've got all this information that really looks like this, but you really hardly ever find somebody that attribute exact something to someone and say, oh no, they definitely mm -hmm. own this port, this IP right. address, this MAC address <coughs> came from here without a doubt, right? They know the first hop, but right. they don't want to talk we about it. We just saw that this week with Reality Winner. Oh, yeah. The they yeah. know that she printed that document mm -hmm. on that printer because of the from her workstation. Piece of paper in a scan. The, yeah. the printer puts micro dots on yeah. the paper. Mm -hmm. Who knows about that except for geeks like ourselves? Yeah. So they We're know that she printed it <laughs> on, that, on that printer. She sent an email to, I think it was The Intercept, Yep. from right. that computer, yeah, and uh, you talk about attribution, okay, maybe somebody spoofed her credentials while she was at lunch and logged on and did that. Probably, probably not. Probably yeah, not. they probably have her access control walking right, in the right. building and her log her card to right. log into the system right. and all that. And so we're going to have to take a break. Just for a second, we're going to go pay some bills, uh, have a commercial here. Uh, give us about a minute. We'll be right back. Stay safe until then. Come back and see Andrew's Security Minute. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week, helping us to explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Hi, I'm Carol Cox. I'm the new host on Eyes on Hawaii. Make sure you stay in the know on Hawaii. Join us on Tuesdays at 12 noon. We will see you then. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Andrew, the security guy. And today we're kicking around a little bit of cybersecurity. We're kicking around a little bit of passwords, consumer business. Um, take time to take a look at your physical security system, all those cameras, the access control equipment. See what kind of passwords have been deployed. Make sure that they're not just running administrator accounts that they've assigned users to stream video and got different passwords for those. Make sure they're managing that properly. That's my security minute back to the gang. We got the professor and we got Jeff Milford here today. Which we, we call him Mr. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> Perfecto. We got the professor and Perfecto on one show. Awesome. Uh, you got the, okay, so shout out really quick to your show, uh, Hibachi Talk. You and Gordo did a great show uh, this week. Yeah, we had a, a I had no idea what Terry yeah, and it was great. Rotary, I had no idea what that was. Oh, I, I, no, I, I yeah, heard Gordo, about it. Gordo started a couple of clubs. I, I just charted this one with Josh. So it's so a, 51 of them in Hawaii. Yeah. And the 51st was your guest founded that one, yeah, just a couple yeah. of months ago. And myself, Two months I old. helped charter it. You helped charter it. That's yeah. dynamite. It's amazing I, stuff. I had no idea. Great stuff. You, so you don't sleep. You just can you tell? Never. You See just, you just, <laughs> Thank you. You just do so much for the community. It's, it's fantastic. And and because you wished Gordo a happy birthday on the show, it's fair game. So you said it's this week. So I'm gonna shout out happy birthday, Gordo. Happy uh, birthday, Gordo. <laughs> happy birthday, Gordo. <laughs> and nice. and you held up the, the bottle of Bomar. Yeah. So uh, we're looking for. You want to be there when he opens that up. You just don't want to be on the streets. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it was a good show, and you guys always have a good time. Uh, the young well, guests, you're, get back on there with us, you know. I this, love this you, conversation you crosses all over. We cross from cyber, we cross from bots. Cross pollinate, yeah. Well, let's get back to security, Jeff. That's why you're with us. Uh, we have social networks that, mm -hmm. especially nowadays, our youth uses these, yeah, and not just teenagers. We're talking about preteens use this stuff. I mean, I think their whole lives are on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, How realistically, you know, their whole lives are there for the taking, you know, for the, if someone wants to get that data, you know, it lives there forever on those servers right. of that provider, right. by and large, maybe some of them are show and they disappear, Snapchat, maybe not, you know, who knows. Now, these, these, these kids get a smartphone when they're very young, mm -hmm. and this is 
they really don't understand the underlying technology. No one explains it to them. This no. is just a magical, ubiquitous device that's always connected to this ethereal thing called the, the yeah. internet, and it's always available. If and when they don't have four bars, they're mad. And your right. friends can find you anywhere. Yeah, I wonder who else could. Yeah. <laughs> they well, look look what it does. They're not thinking yeah. that stuff, right? <laughs> so uh, let's pretend we're parents, we have small children, and we actually make the, the terrible mistake, I think, of giving them a smartphone and mm. saying, here, try out Pinterest and, and Facebook and mm. all the other uh, social media sites that pop up here mm -hmm. all the time. What would you say to parents? Some of the some of the first steps to getting your kids to secure their social media accounts so they don't just broadcast all this information. What are the dangers? How do we stop it? Um, I think as a parent, you have to stay interested. You don't necessarily have to look over their shoulder constantly, but you have to know what accounts they have. Maybe you log into their accounts and see what they've been up to periodically. Random oh, yeah. audits. Um, same thing that happens to us in, in our work life. Mm -hmm. um, you have to, you can't scare people, but you want them to understand the dangers. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things the Safe and Secure Online Kids program talked about was the person who shared their social media account with their friend, and as often happens with kids, they had a fight, and that person could log in as you and destroy your reputation at school by posting false things. Or the girl that goes into the women's restroom and takes a compromising photograph oh, and shares yeah. it with somebody. Mm. They, I saw a video that was really disturbing because by the time the girl came back in the classroom, that video or that picture had been shared among everybody. It's already everybody. circulating. And yeah. you can't remove that. It's like we say, it's there forever. It's forever. People think, oh, I deleted that email. Well, you deleted it maybe from your machine and, and maybe from your account, but it's backed up somewhere. It exists somewhere. You, a, you can this never very get important rid of point. anything. You know, people don't understand that this internet isn't just one big entity and you, you can delete and post things mm -hmm. there. This is a, 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 a compendium of other entities. They're all exactly. millions and billions of physical devices and each time you go from device to device to pass your message along to its destination, it leaves a little bit of itself behind. Mm -hmm. And it's up to that device whether or not it wants to clear that out right. or keep it around. And if it's a server and it's got a lot of memory and it's not set up right, it could keep it forever. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of tools that are con constantly scraping all of those little hops for information that they can uh, sell right. or right. use to, against you or whatever. And right. I think people don't understand the information gathering power that's out there uh, sort of against you, you know. Mm -hmm. If you put numbers in line that look like a social security number or look like a bank account number, it gets scraped, you know, yeah. there's this tool. Yeah. And you, you hope that your email's encrypted, but but is it every through every hop, in between every hop that it takes, things like that, There's it's not always clear that, that um, you're being protected that way. Even going to the, the dark web on Tor, like we talked mm -hmm. about before, the last hop from the Tor network to your destination, mm -hmm. if that's not HTTPS, it's in the clear, it's in the clear. Mm -hmm. right? And yeah. people can see where you came from and what you're doing, and every all the traffic that goes back and forth. Yeah, and people should assume that their their information is in the clear. You know, when you're putting that stuff out there, you should just assume your grandmother's going to read it, your mom's going to read it, whoever the, that you would be most embarrassed by reading that kind of information you should presume that they're gonna have access to it. And don't get mad and, that people do that. that way. Um, yeah, I, I, hear, I hear people, so this is this comes up in my classes every single year, um, the, the Edward Snowden debate, mm -hmm. good guy, bad guy. Mm -hmm. And I just let it go, I wanna hear what people think. Um, I'm not gonna issue an opinion right on the show. However, I will say that everything Edward Snowden did that he exposed was already put into law. In 2002, we did the Patriot Act. Mm -hmm. Had you read the Patriot Act? I did. It was boring as hell. However, <laughs> it was a little bit scary. I knew that this could happen. It didn't say this will happen, but we're giving mm -hmm. permission for people like Verizon to do exactly what exactly. they did. Yeah. They weren't breaking the law. And it was no surprise to me, but nobody else read what they were voting for. Yeah. <laughs> so be aware. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a good tip. Yeah. you got to be aware what, what's I, out there. When you talked about how to start kids off, you know, and if you can make that child, your child or your neighbor's child, which, whatever, that mouthpiece for that to help their friends be mm -hmm. secure. Yeah. But, hey, yeah. you know, guys, we, really sh we shouldn't talk about this online. You shouldn't do that online, and here's why. Right. You know, if, if you could get them thinking securely, because I think the U.S. is kind of probably a little further behind that than countries like Germany mm -hmm. and Europe, where there's a little more awareness there about privacy and protection of privacy. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, there's law coming out of Europe that's going to change the game a right. bit for business, international business. So um, I just think our, our 
education process is starting too late. You know, we're willing to give the device and let you go lose your mind, but we're right. not giving you any guidance to take yeah. along with the device. Yeah. We need a little training program there, right? Uh, I really yeah. think so. Imagine the, the, the CISSP for youth. Yeah. You know, the, oh, that, the no, module that's one. That's a great idea. Module right? one. Why module not start one. them off young? Yeah, so one of the things I see kids doing a lot is uh, sharing passwords. Mm -hmm. oh, and, yeah. and Sharing it in a sharing, text. And sharing yeah. an account. And it, yeah. But they share the username and password in a text. Right. So for our audience members out there, they should know, uh, cell phones are radios. They broadcast in all <laughs> directions, all the time, unencrypted, unless you specifically encrypt something. So when you text, you're telling the entire world that text. Yes. And there are Linux distributions that you can put on a laptop that have all the tools a hacker needs. The oh, reason, Kelly. Oh, oh, yeah, Kelly. Yeah. The, Kelly's the awesome. reason they're there, of course, yeah. is for the white hat hackers to do good things. Sure. However, you could sit in a Starbucks or any other place with public Wi-Fi. You can do lots of really bad things. Right, and, and kids will use open Wi-Fis a lot mm -hmm. to save on cellular transmission yeah. costs, right? Yeah. The, the, we have data levels now, and to save, the, the companies tell you, hey, keep your Wi-Fi on and use somebody else's Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and we won't charge you your cellular data on right. your data plan, right? So they gladly, oh, great, I got free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi. Free wi but it's not secure. No. Right? It's just open. No, it's, don't I'll, check it's your probably bank account. probably not even the one, you're probably not even on the access point you think you're mm -hmm. on. You right. know, somebody sitting there, you should run Wireshark on that first and take a look. So they should teach mm -hmm. kids to use Wireshark, for example. Yeah. Now, that would so be that an interesting see. class. Right in high school, let's break open Wireshark. Wireshark yeah. is a network protocol yeah. analyzer. Let's we see if we're we scan on traffic. Model. We can yeah. see what's in the packets. We can see all the clear text. Right. If it's not encrypted. We can oh, use yeah, when, when you see that, when you see the packet capture and go, oh my God, that's my password right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. It's wow. an eye opener. Yeah, I do that with my students. And, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, awesome. our average age student is 26. So by the time we get them, oh, wow. they've been doing this for. A so when should we years. start them? What, 14, 12? When no, are they getting no, these no. devices? These kids are getting it at ages 8 and 9. Yeah. A phone. Yeah. A phone, a smartphone. I, see, I wow. see that all the time. And that's not just, that's not recent. That's, you know, when, when my youngest was that age, her friends were having a smartphone. Yeah. It's just a little scary. So Get, getting back to what you said, yeah. one of the filters you could use for the kids is, I don't want to ever see anything on your social media account that you couldn't tell me. Yeah. Or, oh, or good tell one. I like that. Tell grandma yeah. or something mm. like that. Yeah, anything you say, you act like we're standing there. Yeah, you need to filter yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and tell them you're watching. Yes. So if they don't think you're watching, it's weapons free. How do we yeah. penalize them? So what's the how do we how do cuz you know how kids are? Because they're going to do whatever you tell so them not to the do. Phone away. Yes, so that was so the easiest punishment, right? That's the easiest then, one. Right? right? So, uh, well, I, mean, I can't believe we're coming up on the last minute of the show. Is that and, it? Oh, no. we got to do this, uh, this part two of the show. Yes. Yeah, so we got to come it. back and yeah. let's do more yep. social media security because yep. there's all kinds of settings we can go through on mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter. So we'll do that really soon, yep. maybe in the next Good couple idea. of weeks. Good idea. Hardening an app. Yeah, you got to harden your security account, your account, right? You don't want to post to everybody. Right? What's the, the the biggest tip you can give us in the last minute of the show? That's okay, for everybody watching, do a backup right now. You yes. never know when ransomware is going to hit you. There's a company called Cyber Reason, all one word, that has a free version of ransomware, and it creates folders, traps on your machine to try to trap the ransomware. Oh, it's cool. not enterprise ready, but it's it's something. So do your backups and also do your updates. Um, some, it doesn't occur to people, uh, smart TVs have updates, there are security updates, your router from Oceanic or, or um, Hawaiian Tel. Oh, you Apple need to, TV. You need to on, on Apple those Watch. updates, yeah. the, updates for, the updates for your phone, all of those things need to be run immediately. In the past, we used to kind of laugh and giggle because some of Microsoft's updates were not as friendly as they could have been. <laughs> they, they would break, they would break things. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, they got so much nice. better. So the second Tuesday of every month is when Windows releases its updates. Patch Tuesday. Patch Tuesday. Right. Yep, I live for those Patch Tuesdays. I make sure all of our machines, the Windows 10 does it automatically if you set it that way, but I, I go back in, make sure all the updates have been applied. And then I remember, oh, this is a good time to go in and look at my router. Check my router to see if there's an update. So there's backups, a good tip. We're going to have to wrap up the show. Uh, Aloha, everybody. Thank you for being with us. And remember, when you're out there, stay safe.